uh, event. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of the OpenStack Summit. I'm John Furrier, and joined with my co-host today, Jeff Frick. And uh, Silicon Angle is a place you want to go to, siliconangle.com, as a reference point for tech innovation. Go there, emerging technology, as well as the enterprise. Got it all covered. Go to wikibon.org for free research. And the Wikibon team is here. David Floyd is in the analyst meetings. We expect to hear from him shortly uh, when he comes out of the analyst meeting. Apparently, a lot of great presentations from end users and implementations, and the theme here at OpenStack is all about code, bringing code to the table, deployments, real production work. And our next guest is a, uh, one of our favorites. She's also was a contributor, is still a contributor at siliconangle.com, now works for Red Hat. Diane Mueller, welcome, welcome to theCUBE. Well, thank you very much for having me here, Jeff and John. It's a pleasure to be here, as always. Great to have you. You've written some really good posts as a contributor to SiliconANGLE, and uh, you're, you're the past girl, we, 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 we say, right? You, you write a lot about platform as a service, and now you're at Red Hat. So, obviously Red Hat's been a leader yep. uh, in, in many different areas, but also participating heavily in the cloud, as well as big data as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of announcements, but we want to just talk shop here. So give the quick uh, commercial on Red Hat, what's happening with Red Hat, and what are the key uh, cloud initiatives that they yeah. got going on? So um, we're here at OpenStack, and it's, it's amazing because there are so many Red Hatters here, and you'll see the red fedoras, and I didn't actually get one yet because it's only been about 30 days that I've been <laughs> on the Red Hat team, so eventually I'll get a Red Hat. But, um, yeah, you're working your way up. So I'm working my way up the food chain the there. So <laughs> from the straw to a real red fedora. But um, OpenStack, uh, OpenStack is a real, really near and dear to our hearts now at um, Red Hat. And we're probably, I think right now, it'll be announced that we're the number one contributors to um, the OpenStack initiative. And um, we've got people doing everything from heat to storage to compute and all that um, wonderful stuff. And so the, at the infrastructure as a service layer, Red Hat is really um, going full tilt boogie, um, fo putting a focus on what we call RDO, I think I have a lo logo here, uh, the Red Hat distribution of OpenStack. And we have a new release of that that's out now. Um, as well as at the platform as a service layer, um, you may or may not have heard of OpenShift. Um, we have an open source project that feeds upstream um, OpenShift Online and OpenShift uh, Enterprise uh, products. But um, what I really focus on is the origin, which is the origin of all things, um, is the open source project that is a platform as a service, the next generation of platform as a service. And you know, as you noticed, I'm a bit of a pause girl. I kind of, I'm either considered a pause queen or a posikist. I'm not sure which, but <laughs> as a, a long time um, developer, uh, one of the things that's really brought the joy back into being a programmer again, and made me want to come back and develop, you know, iPhone apps and all kinds yeah. of fun stuff, is that platform as a service has made it really ridiculously easy to get my applications out there. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk shop now about this, because this, you're a geek girl, and we love to, love to, and your, your post on, go to Silicon Angle and search for Diane's post, they're awesome. Um, but everyone knows SaaS, software as a service, so you know, there's a lot of, lot of SaaS mindset out there, you're seeing things like salesforce.com, we heard um, Josh from uh, Piston Cloud talking about anything that runs on, on the app is, power in the cloud. But there's two other aspects that Amazon's absolutely disrupting. That's infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. Mm -hmm. um, talk about what's the distinction between the two and, okay. and, and why are they so important and, which, and what's fitting into which buckets? So what, if you think about what infrastructure as a service is, that's the elastic compute layer. That's the layer of all the computing resources, um, the, the memory, the the storage, the, where you put your data, all the, all the instances that get spun up. So that takes care of all of the computing resources. But platform as a service on top of that is the containers in which your applications run. And so what we um, generally see are the frameworks, whether they're um, Python ones like Django or Flask or Bottle, plus all the web servers, Nginx or Apache or whatever it is, all the services and frameworks and languages um, are made available to you in an automated way. So if you're if you're an applications developer like I am, um, when I go and decide I'm going to write a PHP program or a Python program, the language gets deployed, all the packages and dependencies are taken care of, the frameworks that I want to use are, are um, managed, and all of the, in a, a secure, um, SE Linux if you're using OpenShift container, um, and that, that ensures that the container in which my application is running, if it's on a shared host, on, on shared infrastructure, it can't um, have a noisy neighbor or can't have any its privacy invaded, and it uh, shares um, resources as a good neighbor as well, um, and the platform as a service is really the architecture that manages all those containers, scales up the applications and down as they need to be, and makes it so that um, we can all share resources on that infrastructure layer, 
but um, we do it in with quotas and policies and all of the things that... The plumbing. The plumbing, plus yeah. all of the things that the auditors and the compliance and the risk managers all worry about too, as well as helping um, give IT and my, the people who are near and dear to my heart, the DevOps kind of folks, the control over who has access to what, what resources and quotas in a managed way. So it's really, platform as a service is the thing that actually manages um, the expectations of the developers and the um, ops people as well. It helps us get the, our applications up there really rapidly, but not in a way that um, is going to eat up too what much time. What is the state of the platform as a service market right now, in your opinion? You know, what's the vibe? What's it like right now? What's the sentiment? Well, it's very, it, it's interesting because there, in the beginning, there was Heroku and Engine Yard and all these public pauses that really did some amazing things and um, they just really made platform as a service an expectation of developers. So it was really cool. Um, but then what you started seeing is some of the privacy and control issues coming up. And so there have been a number of uh, proprietary platform as a service offerings coming up. Um, and people uh, who are ISVs and hosts are also adding platform as a service and so you see a lot of that. But I think what's happened now is there's this huge shift to the open cloud. And what we're seeing even in the PaaS market is that it's the open source, community driven platform as a services projects that are actually taking off. So it's changing. It's changing because um, I think everybody realizes that platforms as a service is a very important cog and they don't want to repeat it every single time. You know, nobody, nobody wants to reinvent the wheel for each organization. They want to build, the open source mindset is to build on the shoulders of right. others. Yeah, and I think that's, um, the key actually, when something is that integral to the cloud, it ought to be something that the all of the ecosystem folks collaborate on and make sure that the interoperability is there, that the scalability is, that it's that'll run on any cloud, and um, that we don't waste time as organizations or as developers building out proprietary pauses. And I think right. what we've seen, the shift in the market I've seen in the last even 365 days has been tons of people working on and collaborating on the open source projects. And if you go to, op this is my only pitch, openshift.github.io, you can see. That's not a pitch, it's a URL. It's a URL, <laughs> it's okay. that's not a pitch, that's all right, a, that's, that's not a pitch. Yeah, go to the URL, it's, like, save the it's like a hashtag. Save the pitch, go to the URL. And if you, if you, think, about, like if you think about what GitHub is, data. all of, everything about OpenShift is on GitHub including who's working on it. By the way, we, you're not a pitcher, so we're, you're, gonna, you're good with us. That's yes, all right, cool. Yes, giving a URL to information is not pitching, that's good resource, there you go. good you, data. There, there are people, there are users, there are people, there's a new category that's just, is stargazers, people who are watching your project, so you can watch and you can see uh, you know, how that is just astronomically. Right, the stargazers right. are even are joining in at, at, at more uh, rapid pace. As well as if you go and look at the members of who's contributing, it's um, well outside of just the, rap, uh, the Red Hat folks that open sourced the project initially. It's now, you know, people who are using our enterprise products are giving back, peop the people who are um, developers on um, OpenShift Online, or the public pause side of um, Origin, is they're, they're giving the feedback that's getting incorporated into Origin, because what it is, is that open source project, and as all open source, they, they're what feeds upstream commercial offerings. And you know, there's, you know, just saying, that um, it's really, truly, I think now, an open source world in the PaaS market. Right. And if you're not wor working with an open source um, PaaS provider, then you're really um, reinventing the wheel in a way that you don't need to. So is, is more value delivered via PaaS as a development assist or runtime? Uh, well, it, it's assuming your apps are running in a cloud and you, all your good neighbor uh, comments because mm -hmm. we all like good neighbors. Good neighbors are good things, <laughs> uh, and, but but firewalls and fences are very good things. I think Robert Frost or somebody like that <laughs> said the thing about a good fence is, uh, or Mark Twain. I'm not sure. Good who neighbors, it, a good fence. Good neighbors <laughs> need good fences, and that's really where the security issues come in. And and when you're choosing a pause, what pause does is there's sort of three audiences. It, there are um, the business reasons for having it, because you want to manage your resources, you want to get the best um, value and ROI on your actual resources. There is There are the IT folks the, and the ops folks who are trying to manage all these demands for people to build up and spin up stacks and PaaS automates all of that. And then there's the developers. Um, people like me that want, just want to get 
uh, the well, resources. All the innovation is in the developer community right now. Well, and they need, they need infrastructure, they need pass. Yeah, and nobody wants to wait six months for someone to spin up a stack and then find out that, you know, oh, it's got the wrong version of Apache Tomcat, oh, it's got, you know, uh, an earlier version of Python 2.7 and I needed 3.3. Um, all of that should be self-service, all of that should be on demand. Isn't that the main benefit of OpenStack? I mean, basically you can build faster. Well, I think, oh, you said OpenStack, so I'll just correct you a little bit. It's, it's the main benefit of pause. And one of the things that I'm really clear about is that just, build, just building a lot of um, pilot projects for cloud initiatives within inside enterprises will just um, spend all of their planning time figuring out how to deploy OpenStack or um, CloudStack, I, I said CloudStack at the OpenStack Summit, but or whatever the um, infrastructure layer is and they forget to I add mean, we had Randy pass. Bias basically said OpenStack wins, CloudStack is, you know, you really. Choo you choose, I don't care because my pause runs on it. Right, yeah. so for me, yeah. it, it really, it doesn't matter. There might be some use cases too, right? There are some interesting, there. well it, at 4.30 today, I'm going to be demonstrating deploying OpenShift on OpenStack um, in the ecosystem one using Heat, which is this really cool new orchestration um, set of tools that are, have come out for OpenStack. And I think that's, it's interesting how um, the OpenStack wor stuff works really nicely with the OpenShift and how quickly we've been able to take these new innovations coming out of the OpenStack Tell world. us about some of the, some stories you, you can share, um, and it doesn't have to be Red Hat related, it can be, where um, you've seen some real good examples of use cases that, that, are, that are shining moments in the industry right now, We're using cloud, using PaaS. Um, that you can point to as, as a leading indicator of this big mega trend. So, so I think, I mean, in, in a lot of ways, I'm a mobile app developer. So I think the mobile and what's being called backend as a service, the world's worst acronym. <laughs> uh, we, have, we have to keep a tally board. Like, that is, that is the through worst today. one. Conscious of images, <laughs> bad images. I think one of the things, <laughs> the, the hidden secrets, <laughs> the secrets out there is that um, that platform as a service and cloud computing um, has really helped, um, and Apple, creating the Apple Store, I'll have to say, has really helped drive the, the plethora, the variety of e easy to deploy and build um, mobile applications. I think that's one of the key things that you've seen. You know, it's not just games and things like that, but really core um, applications that are able, we are able to really quickly get out um, because we don't have to wait for the services, the stacks, and so people can come with great new innovations. My, my favorite one right now is, uh, and it's got a little bit of a scalability issue, but Untapped, and um, if you go to Untapped, if you're a craft beer drinker, and if you're here in Portland, Oregon right now, and you're going around, go to Untapped and download their iOS app, uh, or their Android app, and you can track all of your um, beer drinking habits here in Portland, and we can see where you've been. And, but it's, it's little things like that, that would never have happened if cloud hadn't. And, yeah. and it's Creativity just- Creativity's unleashed. I, and what I say is that platform as a service has really made development fun again. You know, it's like when I had to go out and build a, a request a stack be built for me or um, I couldn't just give my credit card to AWS and run my application when I wanted to, I had to manage all of that. I didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah, it's you a know? lot of mundane oh, well, it's, you know, and, but, assholes. But the, the, the general surgeon's warning here, this is a label, you should know what's going on on your cloud, all right? And that's why an open source <laughs> cloud is a good cloud and the pause, you, you know, you'll get into some issues like um, if you don't pay attention to what's actually happening on your pause or on your IIS level and you just trust that the service provider is doing all the right things, you get into situations like Rap Genius and um, Heroku and the blaming war of who's responsible for that. If you're a developer, you're still responsible for knowing what's running under the hood. Just because it's easy to deploy doesn't mean you shouldn't know what's going on. Don't ignore that because I think that's uh, for a lot of startups. We get into this fun mode where, oh, let's deploy this app or let's deploy that app uh, or let's just do it. And um, I think one of the backfires of the MVP lean ops, lean development world is that people just did get their first you know, app out there without really understanding what was underneath. And I think one of the things about community-driven efforts. Is Agile not viable in mobile? Oh, it's definitely viable, but you real, I mean, it's definitely, and you should. You still should do a rapid application development, do multiple iterations, all that's goodness. But what I'm saying is you shouldn't do it blindly. 
And just because a PaaS is there doesn't mean you shouldn't understand that what resources it's using, what resources you're using, what the web servers are. What I don't like doing is configuring all that damn stuff. I just want it to work. Diane, great to have you on theCUBE and uh, you're a, a contributor at SiliconANGLE, now at uh, Red Hat, doing some great things over there. Final question is, what are you working on now, both at Red Hat and personally, what are you following and writing about? So, right now, um, the, the bugaboo that I'm working on is security. So I think one of the things that um, I've come to realize that in order to be good neighbors, you have to have good security. And what we're doing with SE Linux um, in order to secure platform as a service has been really my hot topic and my hot button because um, the thing called LXE containerization is just not enough. Um, and that's what I think a lot of the other platform as a services are using. And so what we're really, really trying to do is educate people about um, what SE Linux really is and, and how it works, and so that's what I'm focusing on these days, as well as getting more um, eyeballs on the Origin project. Great to have you on theCUBE, finally. Um, talk and shop, great to have you contributing to SiliconANGLE, congratulations at Red Hat, Red Hat's doing some great things. Um, a lot of good feedback on what's happening with Red Hat in the field from CIOs I talked to. Um, it's all coming around to, uh, to benefit you guys, all that work you did. Yep. Congratulations to the team at Red Hat, and uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great to talk shop, uh, and the geek girl, the past girl. We want to call yourselves the <laughs> Python DJ, <laughs> at Python DJ, there you as go. our Twitter <laughs> handle. Great to have you on. Uh, we love developers, it's the developer world. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after our, our short break. All right, thank you very much.